Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Hello, daddy. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Thanks, Sa. How is, uh, I hope you're having a great day because today's been a pretty busy, busy day. Um, we're getting, like I said the other day, we're getting prepared to get back going to work. And so that means I got to make sure everything's done here because we get busy. But um, other than that, it's been a great day. And I'm excited for these words and to learn with you. So, and all you guys, it's good to see some of you back. And uh, I'm excited to be along on this journey with you. So, so how are you, Saw? I'm a good and I'm in a hurry to be there with you. <laughs> So, so might be there. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Our documents. Fantastic. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. So excited. Okay, yes. Let's go ahead. Some yeah. to share before the idioms the idioms um no i'm excited to get my shop done though that's for sure i've been working on that quite a bit lately yeah, yeah. it's kicking my butt though yeah uh -huh. yes. yes so uh let's start you know Native speakers love speaking phrasal verbs, as I always say, and uh, you love uh, use advanced adjectives, phrasal verbs, and idioms. So, uh, you're going to learn one hundred and fifty idioms, but we already started. Now is the fourth class, and let's continue as this section of idioms so this section you will learn idioms and you see some example sentences and you will see a picture to help you remember these idioms let's get started daddy wow number 91 yes already yes two more classes of this one to race against the clock. That's when um, you are running out of time to finish your project or to to get to where you're going uh, and you have to be there at a certain time, like running late for work or completing a, uh, a project for work or for school. So yeah, racing against the clock. Maybe even your biological clock or your lifespan. You might be racing against that one. That one would suck, but we all are kind of up. We just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Always expecting to wake up the next day. So, yes, go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. So to race against the clock, it's when you try to finish tasks quickly before a specific time. I race against the clock to finish the audit and meet the deadline. Mm -hmm. Next. Oh, number 92, to catch somebody off guard. Basically to walk up on them or to which is scare them, but you could catch someone off guard by saying a certain thing that they weren't expecting you to say and it would catch you off guard, like, whoa, where'd that come from, you know? Um, and it was uh -huh. like, the blue, but that's catching someone off guard. You always say, yes, you can go go ahead mm -hmm. and you didn't say. <laughs> Might have zoned out, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yes, are you done? Yes. 
Yes, so what, go ahead, so. Okay, what can I say about that one? <laughs> Nine, uh, uh, idiom 92, to catch somebody off guard. Uh, this is when you surprise somebody by doing something they weren't expecting or weren't prepared for. The politician was caught off guard when asked about the scandal. Okay. Yes, yes, number 93, to be on one's radar. You're on my radar. That means they're watching you, keeping a close eye on them, making sure, keeping tabs. Um, yeah, just, just keeping an eye on them is what that means. Go ahead, so. Yes, great. So this idiom 93, to be on one's radar. If something is on your radar, it means you're considering it or thinking about it or aware of it. If uh, it, you could say, you could say, leaving the company isn't on my radar. It's not even something I considering. And the next. Yes, number 94. Good job on that. <clears throat> Thank you. To stab someone in the back. These ones sucks. This one hurts. I think I'd rather take a knife to the back. But usually stabbing someone in the back is by somebody you trust or love. Um, either a good friend or family, spouse. But to, to betray that person is stabbing them in the back. And most of us have gone through that at least once in our lives. And it's never a good thing. So, yeah, to climb down and stab you in the back just because you're on top, not cool. Go ahead. This to stab uh, someone in the back. This means to betray someone, to do something harmful to someone who trusted in you. She told the client she did all the work on the project. I can't believe she stabbed me in the back like that. Next. Daddy? Yes. Number 94, to make a beeline for somewhere. Um, like if you have to go to the bathroom, I'm going to beeline it to the restroom because I got to go really badly. Or there's a fire, let's beeline it to the exits. So yeah, to, to make make a real fast move to, to a destination. I would say, um, you're running late to work today, you better beeline it, beeline it straight there. It's like straight to the job. So go ahead. Yes, good, great, great examples. Huh? Always, <laughs> always great examples. So to make a beeline for, to move it quickly and directly towards something. Example, the guest has made it a beeline for the buffet. Next. Number Next. 96, to be in hot water. Oof, never like that. Especially with your mom or your spouse. You don't want to be in hot water with your spouse. But yeah, it's when you're in trouble, kind of in a situation where you are looking to be in trouble. So you're not quite there, but you are definitely in hot water. 
you know, I think you could do this one. Okay, you. yes, idiom 97 to be dressed to the nines. This is when you dress formally, smartly, or fashionably. We dress to the 90s for our wedding anniversary. Yes. Lo and so, behold. So, oh, just so when you use 90s, it's just when you uh, use it, uh, wear dresses in a special occasion. Yes, that's one. Next, yes. All right. Yes, to be uh, to be between a rock and a hard place. Number ninety-eight. You're gonna die, no matter what. There, <laughs> that guy's gonna get squished by another rock. No, just kidding. Now, to be stuck between a rock and a hard place is when um, you basically have not a lot of situations out of this. Or not a lot of ways out of the situation. Like um, you have a hundred dollar bill and your rent is due and your electric is due. Which one do you pay? Your electric or your rent? You know? Don't know. So you're kind of stuck in a rock in a hard place. Yes, I seen a, a building that said welcome to the rock that is stuck between the hard place. <laughs> so yep. glad. Yes, great yeah. to be between a rock and a hard place. This is when you're in a difficult situation or you have to make a, this, a difficult decision. If I accept the promotion, then I will have to move abroad and I know met my partner won't come with me. So I either accept the promotion uh, that I really want, but then I have to lose Matt or I will stay with Matt and I don't get the promotion. Yeah. I am between a rock and a hard place. It's a difficult situation. It's a difficult to uh, uh, difficult decision. Yes. Next. For sure. Yes, number ninety-nine. Lo and behold. Yeah, this is when um uh, you're telling a story and you could be talking about something and then you say, lo and behold, they showed up. Or it could oh, be wow. about things too, like, lo and behold, all of a sudden I found my shoes. Or, you know, um, you say, I'm looking for my phone and lo and behold, I'm talking on it while I'm looking for my phone. So, hmm. Or it could be negative too. You can use it for negative terms, but not as much. That's why my mom or my sister keeps it. Well, never mind. Anyways, go ahead, Sal. I'm losing my mind. Yes. I I went. Great. Good job. Good examples, yes. Lo and behold, this is an expression used to say that something surprising happened. I was on vacation in Japan and uh, lo and behold, uh, I saw my childhood sweetheart. So it's very surprising that I see my childhood sweetheart uh, across the Road in a foreign city. 
It happened when I was in uh for uh for my uh, for Myers and I I went to Miami and uh, uh an old friend was in Miami but he was in a hotel in the same city as I was that it was uh Fort uh, Fort Myers and uh, we met each other in this place in Miami so it was amazing because we used to live in in the same state in Brazil in close cities and uh, I wasn't expect to see him there I didn't see in the same city but I, I seen uh, I could see him in the other one so it was something surprise surprising to me we used to and always I, say what a small world isn't it yes a small world we used to say Brazil also yes yes <laughs> just, we did used to we still say it Hmm. Oh, number one hundo. One hundred to let the cat out of the bag. Someone that lets the secret out. They let the cat out of the bag. You don't want to be that guy. Don't be that guy. Uh, yep. Um. So yeah, when you've been told a secret or something special that you're not supposed to say, and you do, you're gonna let the cat out of the bag. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna just spill the beans. So yeah, go, go ahead, so. You got it? Can't hear you, babe. Yes, <laughs> not for sure. So, uh. That was a good one, yes. Be, uh, good examples. And you already told everything, yes? About the idiom 100. Yeah. That one was pretty simple. Yes, yes. Let the cat out of the bag. Yes, this is when you accidentally reveal a secret. So let's say you're planning a surprise party for your wife or husband or friend and they know about it. You might say, you know about the party, don't you? Who let the cat out of the bag? Who told you? Who revealed the secret? Who let the cat out of the bag? Who yeah. spilled the beans? Oh, uh -huh. who spilled the beans? Yeah. Good, good one. Uh, number wow, one hundred one. He say one hundred one. Learning this one hundred one to be on the same. One hundred one. Yes, one hundred one. So to be on the same page, to be um doing the same thing and knowing what the other person is doing, so. We can get this project done correctly and on time. Let's be on the same page here. Let's let's agree on disagree. No, just agreeing on something. You're on the same page. You know, you're just you're going with the the flow. It's good to be on the same page with the rest of your team. That way, everything goes smoothly. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Saul. Yes, good, good job. So the idiom hundred one to be on the same page. Uh, this is used when all people agree on something, and that something is generally a plan or how to approach something. The example. Before we launch the project, we need to get everybody on the same page. So we need to make sure that all the different people agree on the plan 
to launch the product. I love next one. To launch the project. Number 102, to sell like hotcakes. Hotcakes, pancakes, you guys have pancakes, yes? So to sell like hotcakes, something that um, will go quick and everybody's going to buy them up. Um, I'm assuming that when those hotcakes came out for the first time, they sold fast. So that's probably where they're getting that. Huh? So yeah, every time uh, yes. you have Girl Scout cookies, they're going to sell like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, it's something that uh, sells quickly or goes quickly, fast, rapidly, very popular. Will sell like hotcakes. Okay, so no, uh -huh. great. Okay, so uh, uh, idiom hundred two has to sell like hotcakes. You already told you, and I could understand. So, uh, I love this idiom. This is used when someone sells very quickly, easily, or in large quantities large amounts for example her new book sold like hot cakes this is so a very good idiom next yes then... for sure 103 to fall or slip through the cracks yeah this is i, I think we've done one like this it's kind of similar um, it might have been for something else, but to fall or slip through the cracks where something gets missed, like uh, sometimes you want it to get missed if you're going to court and they lost your ticket or they slipped through a crack and you get off with no fines, that would be slipping through the cracks or um, yeah, when the bills that's what i prefer them to go related to so you get away with your bills but yeah to slip through the cracks to something would get lost a document or something so go ahead Sal. okay yes the idiom 103 great uh, daddy so to fall through the cracks or to slip to the cracks. As this is used when something is not noticed or something does not have sufficient attention. And remember, you can use it to different verbs, fall or through, and uh, both have the same meaning and they're both very common. For example, I'm sorry, I forgot to send you the report. It is left through the cracks. It fell through the cracks. So I just didn't notice it. I didn't pay enough attention to it. Yes, next. Good job. Thank yeah, well, you. <clears throat> This guy's wigging out right now. To be up in arms. To be up in arms. To be <laughs> up in arms. <laughs> I would say to be up in arms was to have a rifle in your arm and your hands going to war. Because we call guns arms. You have the right to bear arms. Um, is this what they gave you for a uh, for instance, when you looked it up, babe. Yes. Did you cut? Uh, oh, never mind. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah so this hundred four to be up in arms. This is a really good one too, because this is when someone is grumpy or angry about something specific. For example, Julie is 
up in arms because we have to stay late tonight. So Julie, because something specific, uh, we have to stay late tonight. She's up in our arms. And next, Daddy. All right, 105. Fair and square, something that is equal. So like um, when you make a trade or something, you can make it fair and square. That means everything's fair and everyone is square. That means everyone is happy and the trade was fair. So yeah, a good trade is fair and square. And then you shake on it like that. So go ahead. Yes, great. Good examples. 105. Fair and square. This means honestly and according to the rules. So let's say my team lost a competition, but we deserve to lose. The other team played better than us. So I can say they beat us fair and square honestly according to the rules they want to uh, they, they want fair and square next daddy yes 106 <clears throat> to be a black sheep which i think i'm the black sheep of the family just because i'm the one that just took off but uh, to be the black sheep is the odd one out, the one that stands out from the rest. Um, there's always, there's usually always one in the family. <clears throat> that, um, but yeah, the black sheep, the one that always stands out or gets in trouble or um, the one that moves away, you are the black sheep. So everyone knows who they are. Go ahead, Sa. Gotta turn on your volume. Okay. <laughs> so uh 106. Good job, Daddy. To be a black sheep. This is when a member of, of a group is different from other members. And we often use this with family. And uh, an example, all my cousins are married and have kids, except me, <laughs> except Tom. <laughs> he is the black sheep. He is different from, from the other members of the group, in this case, family. Yes? Next. Uh -oh. <clears throat> She wins the race. It doesn't look like they ran very far on that one. Uh, they cheated. 107, by the skin of one's teeth. So the by the skin of one's teeth, like, uh, we did this one once before too, didn't we? It was uh, probably for something else, but yeah, to... I, I, I think it was something close. Yeah, so to be uh, a real close in, in a race... Um, with one and another person, and you can say, I barely won that race by the skin of my teeth. Or I almost didn't get out, I barely got out of there by the skin of my teeth. No. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, so minute that you would say the skin of my teeth. Um, we would say, Another word, but I don't think I can say it. So, anyways, go ahead and stop. Yo, what word? Uh, it's just the C word, but hair. Mm. Like a bad word. And then you say, we got, we made it just by a C hair. No. I didn't yeah. know that one. No, I didn't yeah. know. It's new. But yeah, it's me. spelled C U N T. No, uh-huh. Uh, woman's anatomy. Okay. A bad word. I don't like that word at all. Mm. It's here earlier there than here, no? <laughs> oh, I, I, 
I've had a rough day, a long day, not rough, but a long day. You're all okay, yes, yes. There's some things taken care of. And then the excitement of the news today really got me going for a while. I think it yeah. wore me out pretty fast right after that, though. Yes, yes. My blood was like uh, through the roof for a minute. Like I drank like a pot of coffee. I was so excited. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, now I'm crashing off of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was exciting. That was such good news. Yes, we, such a good news. We were waiting for yeah. so long. Seven months? Yeah. Seven, eight, nine, oh. ten. The nine months. Nine months. It's a time to a kid, uh, you know, when a mom is a child. They they moms need to wait for nine months, no? Yeah, uh, have... we uh, the pregnancy a term of pregnancy, yes, a full term. Yeah. yeah. You ready? Go ahead, Sal. Do you want to finish this one up or go to the next one? Yes, yes. This hundred seven by the skin of one's teeth. This means barely or by a very slight margin. We won by the, by the skin of our teeth. So we won by this much, not very much. Next. That is yeah, 108 to get under one's skin, to be annoying, like, um, Making awful sounds can be annoying. That's getting under my skin. Someone's dragging their fingernails on a chalkboard that gets under my skin, like severely badly. Um, someone nagging or just being literally annoying will get under your skin. Um, some people's voices or, or laughter can really get under your skin because it's just awful. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> great, great. Good job, Daddy. And good examples. So, 100 day to get under one's skin. This is to irritate or upset someone. The example, I don't know why, but Jerry really gets under my skin. My skin is. Je uh, Jerry really irritates me. He really upsets me. And the next, Daddy. Uh, 109. Draw the line. So you'd say, this is where I draw the line. I'm tired of it. You need to go sit down and relax because you're getting under my skin. <laughs> so this is when someone has gotten to the point of your breaking point. And you say, all right, I'm drawing the line here. No. Or, yeah, so like um, when things are, somebody's cheating and you know it, but you're letting it slip until a point that just breaks that line and you, or that, that breaking point and you say, all right, it's time to draw the line. We got to put a stop to it. So, yeah, go ahead, Sal. No, oh, great, Chess. Great examples. So, idiom 109, to draw the line, this is when you put a limit on what you will allow or what you will do. For example, I want to help my sister, but I draw the line at lending her money. So that is why I not do. I will not lend her money. That is not allowed. Next, Daddy. That was a good example. You're great. Yeah, one ten to give something a whirl. Something uh yeah, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a whirl. Um, yeah, we use that one a bit too. 
hey, would you like to go bowling saw? And you would yes. say, sure, I would, I'd like to give it a whirl. Yeah. So, yes, she says. I really like it. You like bowling? Yes, I like a lot. Um, sometimes I throw I'm my own. good on it. <laughs> Are you? I'm not so good. Sometimes. Some days I got it. Some days I don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I throw my arm out. Sometimes I get my fingers stuck in the hole. They're big fingers. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, like the balls I, that... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yes, but I don't, don't play for some time already. Oh, yeah. I know. It's been a while. Yeah. So go ahead, though. Take over. Yes. Great examples. So, uh, 110 to give something a real. This is a fun one. This means to try something for the first time, something new. The example you should give a bowling a real, it's really fun. So, if I know you've never gone bowling before, I could say, you should try it. You should give it a real. Whirl. We say. Whirl. Yes. Whirl. Whirl. Yes. Huh? <laughs> it's a piranha. I think it's the only word here that is weird. <laughs> is it weird? Whirl. Uh, to just to, to pronounce it. To pronunciate. So do you know when the water starts going round and round and it goes down the hole? Uh-huh. We call that a whirlpool. No, a uh -huh. whirlpool because it's whirling around in circles. So we uh -huh. would say instead of saying, I'll give it a whirl, you could say, I'll give it a spin. So it's oh. the same thing as spin. Um, but yeah, you you know what I'm talking about, the one in the water, and it'll suck you down in big, big situations and rivers and stuff. Um, yeah, whirlwind or whirlpool or just a whirl. A whirlwind is when they are like a not a tornado, but just a little dust devil. So yeah. Okay. No, yeah, it says. Yeah, basically just another word for spin. No, yes. No, I get it. The number one, 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 one. Eleven, eleven. Yes, all one. To be or not to be? Is that the question? To be a fish out of water. So uh, basically... It's like being a fish out of water. You're not supposed to be there or you're uncomfortable to be in that area. It's un unfamiliar territory, right? Mm -hmm. you yeah, you even put a person who is in unfamiliar areas and often uncomfortable surroundings. It's like when Saw gets here, she's going to be a fish out of water for the first week or three. But she'll get the hang of it really quick here. At least mm -hmm. she can speak English. When I went down there, I can't speak Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. So I was definitely a fish out of water. So go ahead, stop. No, uh -huh. no, you weren't. I wasn't. I could talk to you. My brother could talk to you. My Everybody could talk to you. Your nephews? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I understand it for sure. Yes. Uh, so, yes. Probably when I get there, I can, I can feel like that. Yes. Just roll back and relax, baby. Yes, oh. or not, or not. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. At least we all drive on the same side of the road. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. My first time in Florida, I I already 
felt myself at home. Oh, I thought you were going to tell your motorcycle story, but you might want to keep that with yourself. Yes. It's pretty funny, though. It was a crazy one, though. <laughs> it's better <laughs> say no. <laughs> oh, that's great. Just say don't take a moped to a three-hour drive in a car, but on a bike. So let's, uh, let's get this up finished up. I'm having a hard time. My yes. mind is a little broken to this this evening. No. Really, really? It's a little mushy, like fish's brains when they're out of water. Yes. Okay, yes, to be a fish out of water. This is used to say that someone is in an uh, unfamiliar and uncomfortable uh, surrounding. The example here, I feel like a fish out of water when I go to English meetings because you have to speak in English and it's that unfamiliar and uncomfortable. You feel like a fish out of water. Good job. Thank you. Yes. That fish out of water. Um, I like to take fish out of water and then eat them. No, I'm just kidding. So 12, 112. <laughs> to go the extra mile to to give it that extra little uh umph or give it give it a little extra to go an extra mile. It's good to do you know, to go the extra mile when you're at work or even at home to clean, when you're cleaning up the house, go the extra mile and wipe down the doors and then and the handles. It's not a bad to do. And uh, more than likely someone's watching. You're going to get, you know, a, a, some, uh, I told you my brain's going much. Go ahead, Sal. I like go somewhere for a second. It's weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, 112, to go the extra mile. This is when you make an extra attempt to achieve something or do something. For example, here, she's a great assistant. She always goes the extra mile. So, she does more than she needs to Next Thank you. Oh, that looks like a creepy forest. Let's do it. Let's do it. What? <laughs> number 113. Oh, it's even 13. Look at that. Is 13 a bad number for you guys also? Did yes. See the forest okay. for the trees. Wow, I haven't heard that one in a long time. Oh, yes. The forest for the trees. You're seeing past the trees in this point. You're, you're looking at something way different than what you're actually looking at. So, all right. You better take this one. You have. <laughs> okay, idiot. I am fading. Oh, uh-huh. Idiom 113, yes. Hypnotizing, yes. <laughs> what did you say? The trees are hypnotizing me. They're sucking me in. <laughs> yes. What? Is he dead? <laughs> 113 to not see the forest for the trees this means uh, when you're so involved in the small minor details of something that you don't see the bigger picture you don't see the forest 
from the individual trees. The example here, the project failed because we couldn't see the forest for the trees. We lost track of the big picture. And next. Like sometimes when I'm talking here, all of a sudden I'm going. Yes, what? yes. It just disappears. I don't even know where it comes from. Straight from the horse's mouth. Oh, Mr. Ed. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, straight from the horse's mouth. I think that came from a uh, show. I don't know. It used to be called Mis Mr. Ed, the talking horse. So, yeah. So, when you say straight from the horse's mouth, that's straight from the source. Right from the person that originally told it. Um, because you know, like that. Did you ever play that that thing that we call it telephone when you were in grade school? Yes, even not so long ago, <laughs> we were playing oh, really? all a lot of friends all together, and it yeah. always ends up a different story when by the time it comes back to you every yeah. time. I don't know if people do it on purpose. I don't think they do, but... Probably. <laughs> you could say, yeah, I had a um, ham sandwich for lunch today. By the time it gets back to you, it's Susan went to, to um, the falls and had a picnic. <laughs> That's how far it could go away. <laughs> So, yeah, don't always trust what people tell you if it's not straight from the horse's mouth. Okay, so? Yes, yes, we uh, we, we played that uh, uh, some time ago and we laughed a lot because in the end it was really funny what people used to understand them. <laughs> totally different from the first one. Well, it's but not always... Um, what actually got said, it's what they heard in their head. Like you could say something, like you could even be speaking to a person and you're speaking right to them, but what they're hearing is not what you're saying because you're, I don't know. I don't know why, but sometimes that just happens. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know why too. Uh, uh, when it's a big, big one, no? it could could not be so easy to to go to the end when there's a lot of people as I was uh, some some days ago with a lot of people all playing together and it was really funny that's because people aren't paying attention they're thinking of something else while someone's talking to, the, to them in their ear and then they blend it together that's what they see in their head yes. is what they and what the other person was talking and they don't even realize they did it oh uh -huh. mm -hmm. for sure so yes next number yeah. one or you gotta finish this one up yes 114 okay as you told good examples uh but uh straight from the horse's mouth yes um well, uh, when you uh, get information directly from the source, a direct information. So I heard straight from the horse's mouth that we're not getting bonuses this year. Next, Daddy. Oh, don't cry wolf. Number 115, yeah. The boy that cried wolf. You ever, you ever hear that story? Yeah, they, no, not yet. Yeah, they, they used to say that when we were younger because that's that's a big thing when people cry wolf. So to cry wolf is to to falsely call for help or um yeah, to falsely call for help. So like if you're fa always calling for help uh -huh. um, but you don't really need it, people come running to you at first and then pretty soon they're like Oh, he's just faking it, and then when he really needs help, no one's gonna be there. So that's that's for that's called crying wolf. Um, uh -huh. 
don't do that or you will not be saved when you actually need it. Yeah, so to cry wolf, to falsely call for help or, yeah. Oh, yes. Great. Huh? Okay, so, um, 115, all right, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to cry wolf, this is when you call for help, when it's you, you not actually need help. In the so in the future nobody will assist you as that told you because you lied about uh, needing help. The example here, I'm not surprised nobody responded to her email. She always cries wolf. So she always asks for help when she doesn't need it, but then when she does need help, but nobody will help her because she cried wolf. Wow. Don't cry wolf. Don't cry wolf. Yeah. <laughs> Better that's, not. That's a big fish in a little pan. Number 116, to have bigger fish to fry. Like I have bigger fish to fry so i'm not going to worry about this little problem over here mr bob is annoying but i got bigger fish to fry i got bigger problems to deal with that is what they're talking about um yeah just bigger bigger and more important things to deal with i don't need to deal with this little petty stuff so to have bigger fish to fry to deal with more important stuff. Go ahead. Oh, great. Uh -huh. Great examples as always. So to have a bigger fish to fry, this is when you have other more important matters to deal with. The example here, can you attend my meeting this afternoon? I have a bigger fish to fry. So I have a meeting that's dealing with more important things than this other meeting yes next daddy all right 117 to play devil's advocate that was a crazy movie i don't know if you've ever seen that but um yeah that was it was a good movie though to yeah. um yeah, because the advocate is like a puppet, right? To argue mm -hmm. against something, even if you think the opposite, to examine all sides of the issue. Is that how you ex I thought it was something else? It would to play devil's advocate. Yeah, like you're the you're the puppet master. I would I thought that's what that meant. Uh -huh. So go ahead, go ahead, saw to yes yeah, Great. Okay. yeah okay to play devil's advocate this is when you argue against something even if you think the opposite to simply to address all sides of a situation the example here uh, it would be great to get a promotion, but to play devil's advocate, it would mean longer hours. So you actually want the promotion, but you, you're going to examine other side just to be complete. Yes. And the next, Daddy. Good job. 118 to steal one's thunder to to steal the show from somebody else to take the light the spotlight um like uh i, I always like to say don't let me take your glory so yeah. like if you got something and you're almost done with it and i come in and finish it 
I just took your glory because I finished the project, but you did most of the work. So that's stealing someone's, uh -huh. yeah. Or you're, you go up and you start telling a story and then I come in and I finish the story. That's taking someone's thunder. So yeah, stealing somebody else's glory, thunder. Um, yeah, go ahead, Saul. Oh, no, great, uh huh? Great examples, no? So this is a very popular one. This is to prevent someone from getting the recognition, praise, or success that they deserve. And you do that by saying exactly what that person was going to say. The example here, she announced her engagement at my engagement party. She stole my thunder. So I should have received the praise, the congratulations at my engagement party. But she announced her engagement. So now everybody is congratulating her. She stole my thunder. Next. Oh, to rain on one's parade, 119. To uh, basically douse someone's hopes and dreams. Like, you're having a great day and I come and just poop on it. You just make it and ruin it their day. To rain on one's parade. To make, yeah, just to ruin someone's day. They're having a great day and you came and just all over it. You don't want to ruin someone's day because I like having good days. So go ahead, stop. Yes, great, great. Uh, so 119 to rain on one's parade. This is to spoil someone's pleasure or special moment. Let's say my friend is very, very happy because she got an A on the exam. I could say, I hate to rain on your parade, but everyone got an A. So I am spoiling her pleasure by saying everybody got the exact same grade. Yes. Next, Daddy. And the right. next part today. <laughs> yes. 120 to be a to to be a cakewalk. To um to be on Easy Street to it's we say that's that's a cakewalk. Something that's easy to do, you would say that. Uh hey, can you um is it is it tough for you to go and go write that up that ticket up for us? He's like, no, that's a cakewalk, no problem, easy to do. No, uh -huh. yes, yes. So go ahead. No great chance to be a cakewalk. Yes, this is when something is very easy, as that it told, or effortless. For example, learning English is a cakewalk, right? Would you agree? Yes. For sure. Okay. I want to eat the cake, mm -hmm. not walk on it. So yeah. thank you so, yeah. for having me. Uh, but I still had a good time. And um, yeah, starting up work and stuff like that is all coming into focus. Um, yeah, and I had a lot of a lot of um, emails I had to deal with today, just talking with the guys at work and getting back into that swing of things. Um, yeah, so probably a little wore out from some of that.
But thanks, everyone, for showing up again. And good to see you. And please subscribe. Definitely press like and um, go ahead and comment. Saw is a wonderful teacher. And I enjoy this class with her. So go ahead. You are a great teacher, too. So amazing examples you created from nothing. <laughs> Actually, mm -hmm. without prepare beforehand, as I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. So, yes, don't forget to subscribe, help us in our channel. Uh, and, uh, of course, comment. Uh, let us know if uh, uh, something is interesting to you. We can prepare and uh, uh, help you guys to improve whatever you need. Because I know there are different demands yes, and uh, bring to us and we can prepare something to better help you. Yes, so it you're doing such a, an amazing job. Uh, think of everything you learned so far. Now, I know that uh, last section it is the fourth and in this uh, section and in the next class we'll see a little more that it will be the the rest of the 150 idioms so yes press like and don't forget to subscribe and see you guys thanks for now and uh, thanks that it should be uh, one more day with those beautiful people who are following us and uh, making us be here for them and uh, happier, yes? For sure. And thanks again. And um, yeah, I had a good time. So bye, yeah. everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Kisses. Night-night. Night-night.